What's going on everybody, James here from Artificial Entertainment, and welcome to another Unreal Engine tutorial. And today we're going to be taking a look at the first part of our multi-weapon system series. So let's go ahead and dive in. Alright, so I have here a third person project. Now one thing just before we continue any further is that this project is in 5.1, although there's going to be very few changes between uh, what you would need to do to get this working in 5.0, and I will be covering those changes as well. So I don't want you to think that just because you're using 5.0 that you can't do it, but the main reason why we're using 5.1 is for the enhanced input action system. It is very nice, especially for gunfire and certain other things, so um, that's why we're using it. I would recommend it. It is stable, works very well, so, um, but anyways, let's talk about weapons. Now, in any weapon system, this is the most important part, having the actual weapons. So that's what we're going to be covering in today's video is that I'm going to show you how to be able to set up the weapons and then we're going to keep moving on as the series continues. So I'm going to create a new folder here and we're going to call this system assets and we'll go ahead and open this up. So with our weapon system, we want one main thing that's going to be the driving force behind a lot of things is going to be what our weapon class is. So if it's a rifle, if it's a pistol, if it's a sword, if it's a long sword, if it's a hatchet, you know, all the things that are going to be helping define certain characteristics about a weapon or certain things that are going to be happening, you want to be able to have this. So we're going to create an enumeration to be able to make this. Now, we are going to make a few different data assets, though. So we're going to create another folder here and just call this data and then open that up and we'll create the enumeration in here. So we're just going to right click go to blueprints, click on enumeration, and we'll call this weapon class enum. And then double click, open that up. So like I said, we're gonna be using this as the thing that's gonna define our weapon classes, but we're also gonna be using this later on in the series in our animation blueprint. So we wanna make sure that there is a nullifier, an idle state of some kind, so this way we can use this later. So when we add in our weapon classes, we wanna make sure that the very first one that we put in is none or idle or null. Basically anything that's gonna reference that there's no weapon currently active. Um, it's not gonna be used in the actual classes, but we wanna have it there for other uses later on. Um, this way we don't have to create multiple enumerators with relatively the same data. Now for me, I have three weapon classes that I'm gonna be using, pistol, rifle, and sword. However, you can have as many weapon classes that you want I'm just doing this so that way, because the more weapon classes you have, the more time it's going to take to get everything set up. So I figure three is going to be a good way to show you guys, and we have mix of ranged and melee as well. So for me, my classes are going to be rifle, pistol, and sword. Now one thing to keep in mind as well is that if you have like laser pistols that are going to have a completely different driving force with their animations and their damage and all that stuff, you might want to create a secondary class for pistols or just create like laser pistol as a different enumerator, like however you wanted to do it. Um, but it is a good idea to make sure to think ahead with how many classes and what your classes are actually going to be. So with that set up here, we're going to save that, minimize. And now we're going to create another enumeration. So right click, go to blueprints, enumeration, and this one is going to be our weapon item list. So what this is going to basically be is this is going to be something that we're actually going to use later on in our data table. We're going to set this, that up in this video. Um, but this is going to be a list of all of the weapons in our game. But this is an internal list. This isn't going to be something the player is going to see. This is purely for you to know exactly what is what, why you're going through encoding things. And you can even create references to them as like an, um, an item number or something later on. But realistically, you just want to make it so that way all of your base weapons are going to be listed here. So for me, I have six weapons. So I'm going to create six enumerations now again i you know these are internal so we can keep this simple like instead of putting nine millimeter pistol i'll just put nine millimeter instead of future pistol i can just put fs you know and then ak then rifle two because i have no idea what the other futuristic rifle would technically be classified as because if it's its own look so <laughs> um and then from here i've got like another sword that i'm calling the ancient sword and then black knight sword so you can see like, these are just internal references, just kind of creating acronyms so that way I know what's what. And you can also put things in the description if you want, but at that point, why not just type it out into the actual name? But again, main thing is no spaces, keep it simple, done. All right, so now that we have all of our weapons list here and we have our classes set up, the next thing that we're gonna do is make a structure. So we're gonna right click again, go to blueprints and click on structure. 
And this one is going to be the weapon underscore item underscore info. Now from here, we can just go ahead and double click, open that up. And we'll go ahead and add two more here. So we have three total structure variable pieces of information, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then we'll take the first one here at the top. And we're going to call this one weapon class. The next one's going to be weapon name. And then from here, we're going to add the actor reference. Now, the reason why we add the actor reference is because it makes it nice and clean and in giving specific instances to the specific instance version of the actor when utilizing interfaces later on. So this is more for, um, you know, getting the nice information flow between the specific weapon that you're interacting with. And the weapon class and weapon name are specific to the weapon. So like this is to help control what the weapon is. And we need to make sure to set this to the weapon class enum here that we made. The weapon name is going to be what's displayed when the character or player kind of hovers over it and it can, you know, display some information about it. So we're going to make that a string. Now the actor reference, we're going to make this just actor. Scroll down a little bit and you'll see actor object reference. So then we'll compile or save, I guess. There's no compiling on a struct here. Um, and then we'll minimize this. And now what we're going to do is create our data table. Now this is going to be the thing that actually holds our weapons. So we're going to right click, go to miscellaneous this time, and we're going to go to data table right here. Now, when you click on it, it's going to have you pick a row structure. This is the reason why we made our structure for the weapon item info. So just type that in. You'll see it pop up and click OK. And then we're just going to go weapon data table. All right. So we'll go ahead and open that up. And now you can see here we got weapon class, weapon name, and actor reference. Now, just like what we did with the weapons list enum, we want to make it so that way there's six of these or however many weapons that you have. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm going to start at the very top and I'm going to start just kind of taking the names that I've put in this enumeration and name them the exact same thing inside of the data table row. So it's going to be, if we double click here, we can just go nine millimeter. And then below that is FS for future pistol, then AK, then rifle two with a capital R, AC. I feel like that should be AS actually. Yes. So I'm going to do that, change that to AS for, because this is supposed to be ancient sword. That's what that's going to stand for. So again, this is just internal things. You don't actually have to name it the exact thing that you want. This is just to show you that if you keep it simple, it makes it a lot easier than black knight sword. All right, so now we have the weapon class, weapon name, and the actor reference you can see here is grayed out, and that's okay. That's exactly what we want because we're actually going to input that live as we go through, and this is going to happen all at runtime. We're not going to predefine this part. But the other two for the weapon class and weapon name, we do. So we want to change the 9mm to a pistol, and we'll say 9mm pistol. And then for this one, again, it's a pistol, and we'll go future pistol. All right, then the AK, this is a rifle, then we'll just go AK-47, rifle 2, we'll go rifle, and we'll go space rifle, just to give it, you know, cool name. Oh, didn't save, there we go. All right, and then this one, ancient sword, change the class to sword, and then sword on BKS for black knight sword, and then again, black knight sword. Now, again, the actor reference is still blank, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and save this. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to make the weapon blueprints now. So we're going to right click, create a new folder, call it weapons. And then we'll double click and open it up. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a blueprint that is going to be the main parent of all of our weapons and all of the children under are actually going to be the weapons that are spawned into the world. So if you've ever used children actors versus parent actors, that's fine. Just, you know, follow along and I think you'll understand it pretty easily. So we're going to right click, go to bl blueprint class, click on actor. And this one's going to be weapon master. Now I like to call them master blueprints because they control everything. They are the master of all the weapons within the, within our game. So you can call it a parent blueprint. I like to call it a master blueprint when we're using it in this type of a fashion, but that's just my preference. Just so you guys know exactly what I'm doing here. And I'm not like creating some weird blueprint class that you've never heard of before. This is just kind of the way I call it. Um, but anyways, so now that we have our weapon master blueprint, we'll open this up. We're going to go to the components tab. We're going to go add and skeletal mesh. 
Now, if you have weapons that are skeletal meshes and static meshes, you're going to want to use both in here because everything is going to be drive or driven off of this. Now, one thing I might recommend is to take whatever weapon is a static mesh, load it into a program like Blender, add a single bone to it, re-export it, make it a make it a skeletal mesh. This way, it's just simple. Um, but you can do it however you want. If you want to make two of them, that's fine. And then you'll have to reference skeletal and static. Um, and you'll understand that as we get further on into the code part of it here. But I just wanted to make that part clear before we continue on. Now, we're not going to add anything into the skeletal mesh asset yet. But now we're going to add a few things to our blueprint. So we're going to go to the variables tab. Add a new variable. We're going to go weapon item info. And we're going to change it from a boolean to the weapon item info struct that we made. Now we also want to add our weapons list and we're going to add that enumeration we made. So we'll just go weapon list and we'll see weapon item list, perfect. All right, so now that we have our weapon item info struct and our weapons list, we'll compile, save, and we have our skeletal mesh component in here as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to right click create child blueprint and we'll name this nine millimeter underscore BP. Now, once you've made your first child, and as long as all of them are going to be under the same parent, you can just duplicate the, the child actor. You actually don't have to go right click on the weapon master, create another child, and again and again. You can just duplicate it. So we'll go 9mm, and this one's going to be FS underscore BP. This one's going to be AK underscore BP. This one's going to be AS underscore BP. This one's going to be Black Knight Sword underscore BP. And this one's going to be rifle too just so I keep it consistent underscore bp all right so now that we have all six of our weapons we can go ahead and just open them up one at a time go to the components tab the skeletal mesh and we're going to add the skeletal mesh into it so for me it's going to be the v100 for that one and then for the ak we got a rifle now the one thing to keep in mind is that you might have to do that where you've got the open skeletal mesh or open full blueprint editor um so just bear that in mind you might have to do that once you start opening them up again but once you do it the first time, I don't think you have to do it again after that. All right, so let's go ahead and keep adding in our things here. Now, this this part can take a moment, um, so just bear with me on it. You know, it is part of the tedium route, but when you add the skeletal mesh component, we can um, then just go through on each of the weapons and just assign. And I think for the next few here, I'm just going to jump over it so that way you guys don't have to watch me adding all the skeletal components here, and then we'll come back as soon as I have completed adding. All right, so I have all my skeletal meshes added in. So there's one more thing that we need to do. Now, I, like we did in the beginning, we added the um, weapon list name enum to our weapon master blueprint and then created the, all the children off of that blueprint. So it's me. What this means is we now have that weapon list attached to each one of these. So we just want to assign these, uh, you know, based off of the appropriate weapon. So this one is 9mm. You can find these blue, uh, these variables here by just clicking on the self of the component section of the child actor. So we can just click on self, and then go weapon list, and this one is AK. Rifle 2, go to self, change that from 9mm to rifle 2. AS, same thing, go to the self change it to AS. So this is just making sure that the enumeration is properly defined because this is going to help our data table find it once we add it here in just a moment. All right, so now that those are all added, we're going to go and save everything. And then we'll go back into our weapon master. And then we're going to go into the construction script of this. So this is going to be where we actually help define what our weapons and items are going to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull off of the construction script here. And we're going to type in data table and we're going to go to the bottom here and get data table row. And then for the data table, we'll select our weapons data table here. And then for the row name, we're going to go to our weapons list enum, get it, pull off, and then we're going to go to string. So you'll see enum to string, and then we'll plug this into the name. Otherwise, it tries to convert it to a byte first, which is a numerical value that is, well, let's just say not, <laughs> not easy to understand exactly what it's trying to say sometimes. But with this, what we basically have done is define each one of these enumerations inside of the blueprints, and it's going to basically cycle through and look for and attach the information associated to whatever that enum is to the weapon row and then assign the information. Now, I know that it probably sounds really confusing, but let me show you. 
give you a more visual example. So what we'll do is we're going to take the weapon item info struct. I probably did that a little too fast. Um, so the weapon item info struct, we're going to take this out and we're going to get the setter node. And then of the row out found out row, we're plugging in like this. Now, here's the key thing though. If we split the struct pin here, so if we undo this, split the struct pin, you're going to see that the actor info part is never going to be filled in. It's not actually going to be assigning any information. So we're going to recombine the struct pin here and push this in, compile and save. Now, this is just something to keep in mind because if you're going to go and try before watch, because the next part in the video, we're going to go over using this information and assigning it based off of certain values and giving it proper actor references and things like that. So I don't want you guys to get ahead of yourself and going, wait, why doesn't this work? Well, because we still have more to do. But now that we have this set up, what I can actually do if I compile and save this, minimize, save everything here. And if I just go into, let's say, I'll take the nine millimeter. We'll open this up. We'll go to the event graph off of event tick. Now remember, we have coded nothing inside of the child actors here. So if I go print string, and remember how I said, if you click on self, you can get access to the variables here that are tied in from the parent blueprint. You can also call them by right clicking so we can get weapon item info, right click, split the struct pin and put in the weapon name. We compile and save, minimize this. And if I just put my nine millimeter into the world, click on play, nine millimeter pistol now gets printed out on my screen. It's not printing out nine millimeter. It's not printing out, you know, pistol or anything. It's printing out the exact name of the exact weapon that I've put into the world. And I can do the same thing for the AK. If we go parent tick, print string, get weapon item info. And then we split the struct pin here. We can then plug in the name into the string, click play. And there we go. Oh, <laughs> helps if I drag it into the world though, doesn't it? There we go, AK, and then the dash 47. So therefore we now have everything being defined from our parent blueprint. So now that we have our weapons set up, we're gonna go into the next video here where we're gonna be going over how to be able to set up the character information such as interfaces and using some of the information that we've created here um, into their character blueprint. So I hope to see you guys for the next one. It's gonna close out for today's video, but as always, stay animated.